anybody here. And for you poetry lovers, today's excursion into yesteryear will be a highly informative one. Are we going to visit Ogden Nash, Mr. Peabody? No, Sherman. The poetic personality we will tete tete with is none other than William Shakespeare. He set the Wayback Machine for Warwickshire, England in the year 1611. And in its customary and genius manner, the Wayback deposited us before a small neighborhood theater, the Ustratford on Avon. Now playing a new play by Will Shakespeare, Romeo and Zelda. Romeo and Zelda? Must be a misprint. But it wasn't, for inside the play was in rehearsal and... Zelda, where for art thou, Zelda? Instead of appearing on the balcony, Juliet, or rather Zelda, came marching out of the wings, carrying a large flower pot. She left the stage and went directly to a familiar figure who was sitting all alone in the front row. That must be William Shakespeare, Mr. Peabody. And look, she's going to present him with a flower. She presented him with a flower, all right. Pot and all. That'll teach you to steal my play. It's a man wearing a disguise. Francis Bacon, if I'm not mistaken, and I never am. Bacon, you'll fry for this. Ushers, throw this pretender out. You haven't seen the last of me, Shakespeare. I'll be back. Are you all right, Mr. Shakespeare? Quite, my lad. But this comes at the most inopportune time. The play opens tonight. Uh, by the by, would you care to witness the initial performance? It would be an honor, sir. However, there's just one thing. Oh? Uh, don't you think Juliet would sound better than Zelda? Juliet, Juliet, Juliet. Uggs Bodkin, sir, I like it. Juliet, it shall be. So that evening saw the auspicious debut of a new play entitled Sam and Juliet. Sam? We'll work on him, Sherman. The play progressed smoothly and the audience was very enthusiastic, all three of them. But during the balcony scene, things went suddenly awry. Juliet, where for art thou, Juliet? Poor Sam never found out because without a warning, the ladder he was on unexpectedly gave way and... The play is ruined, irretrievably and hopelessly ruined. Why do you say that, Mr. Shakespeare? Because there isn't another actor who knows Sam's role. I do. A quick change of clothing, a new ladder, me, and the play resumed. Oh, hi! What hollow light burneth in yonder patio? Egad, the lads in that libber. Verily, I shall ascend to yon balcony and meet my beloved. Easy with your big toe, Sherman. You're crushing my collarbone. Zelda! I mean, Juliet! Thou art wherefore, Juliet? You can well imagine Sherman's dismay when, instead of a lovely young maiden, a lovely young lion appeared. In one prodigious sequence, he left the balcony and proceeded to empty the theater. He then turned on us. Run for your lives. The performance is cancelled. Quick, Mr. Peabody. No need to panic. We'll simply ring the curtain down. Oh, the tragedy of it all. That this should happen to me. If I ever found the rogue who owned that beast. That beast is mine. Bacon. With eggs. That did it. That tears the sheet. We shall settle our grievances with a duel. Fountain pens at 40 paces. Fountain pens my eye tooth. We shall settle it with pistols. Mr. Shakespeare, you can't fight a duel. I must. Mr. Peabody, you will act as my second. And you, young man, you shall be my third. At dawn the following day, the participants met on a misty common. You will each take ten paces, turn and fire. Go. Bacon and Shakespeare set off, but it was so misty that by the tenth step they were no longer visible. You've got to stop. Mr. Peabody, they're liable to get hurt. Don't worry, Sherman. I have a plan. He dashed out into the mist to where a pile of bricks and a wheelbarrow of cement stood. What's this doing here? I put it here during the night. Now, the world record for erecting a brick wall is three seconds. I shall eclipse that. But Mr. Shakespeare and Mr. Bacon are going to fire. They did. Into the wall in nine-tenths of a second. Just in time to stop the bullets. Well, that should settle Bacon's hash. And that should take care of... Shakespeare! Bacon! The good police of Avon arrived at that moment and carted the duelist off to jail. Boy, am I glad that's over! Yes, a few days in the quiet confines of a cell should cool them off. Well, there's one thing that puzzles me, Mr. Peabody. How did William Shakespeare get the name Bard of Avon? A misnomer, Sherman. William Shakespeare was not called the Bard of Avon. He was Bard in Avon. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>